everyone. My name is Eli Schilling, Director of Product Management with Oracle Cloud. And I'm here to welcome you to a video series we're calling Networking in the Cloud. Through the next uh, series of videos, we're going to be talking through various components of networking, uh, security, and design in the Oracle Cloud. To get things started, we're going to focus on the most fundamental component, which is the virtual cloud network. Now, the virtual cloud network is a software-defined network that you create in the Oracle Cloud that is completely isolated, independent, and separate from every other network construct. To understand how the VCN deployment works, we first have to take a look at the proximity or the locality of where we would provision a VCN, or virtual cloud network. So what we're going to do is go ahead and bring in this world map, and what you'll see here as we draw across the screen a listing of many of our cloud regions available around the world. Now, this is just a short set. We have a total of 21 regions today with a goal of 36 by the end of 2020. But what you'll find in a region is a collection of infrastructure and services that are completely independent and segmented from every other region around the world. Now, these regions are also interconnected, but you can think about these as a place to deploy sets of infrastructure and sets of services for your application ecosystem. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move that map off the screen. And we wanna start by building our first virtual cloud network. So if we just do a little like that, now you can see we have our virtual cloud network. Uh, it's contained within a selected region here. And the first thing we do when we set up our virtual cloud network is to define a CIDR range uh, or an IP range. These are contiguous IPv4 uh, IP addresses that will be used with this software-defined network. For the sake of this video series, we're just going to use 10.10.0.0 slash 16. That means that 10.10 .10 is the network address, and then we have .0.0, .0 for all of the addressable space within our virtual cloud network. Now, the next piece, once we have this VCN, is we can segment or we can subdivide into what we call subnets. So we're just going to tap, 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 that's going to give us uh, four different subnets within our virtual cloud network. Uh, you'll see each of these subnets has its own CIDR range, its own block of IP addresses, which is contained within the overarching range of the VCN itself. Now, you're probably wondering why one of these subnets is a little bit bigger than the other <laughs> subnets on the screen here. Well, to really drill into this, what we're going to do is talk about availability domains, because Several of our global regions have multiple availability domains or individual independent physical data centers. So if we just go ahead and draw onto the screen here those availability domain representations, you'll see that some of these subnets exist in a single AD, whereas this subnet across the top actually spans all of the availability domains in the given region. So the key difference here is regional subnet versus availability mm -hmm. domain specific subnet. Now, within these subnets, your IP addresses, your private IP addresses are portable between resources. That means with a regional subnet, if I have a, a cluster of compute resources and I need to fail over from one to the other, those private IP addresses are actually portable between availability domains, between physical locations in this particular region. Now the final piece to keep in mind when it comes to subnets is the notion of public subnets versus private subnets. The key difference here is that private subnets are going to be more tightly controlled and designed in a way to limit your ability to connect directly to or directly from the internet. This is a security control uh, which also prevents accidental exposure of resources stored in private subnets. Now the public subnet, just like it sounds, it's designed to allow you to configure direct internet access to and from these resources in the designated public subnets. We're going to go ahead and take this now and just move it up to the corner of the screen. Uh, we're going to wrap up this conversation on the basics of VCN and subnetting. And in the next video, we're going to get into the different mechanisms or gateways that we would use to communicate out from or into our virtual cloud network. Thanks for joining. Come back and watch the next video. Thank you.